Hey there folks, I'm here with you in the kitchen today to show you how to create a really quality non-stick surface on your cast iron cookware. Because I have been getting questions from you guys and I wanna start leaning into those a little bit more and answering them how and when and where I can. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Autumn Rose. I'm the blogger at A Traditional Life. I'm on Facebook and Instagram, Pinterest every day. Of course, you can find me here on the YouTube channel every Wednesday, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. I premiere another video. So this one is going to be about cast iron. So how do you know when your cast iron needs a reseasoning? Well, if you're using the proper cooking techniques and you're properly caring for it and food is still sticking to it regularly, it's time to reseason and cure your cast iron frying pan. Now, real quickly, what is curing cast iron? What's that all about? Well, basically, obviously your cookware is made from iron. And the way you get a non a nonstick finish on it is to bake oils onto it. You get this buildup, it creates a smooth surface when it's hot. Things don't stick to it. That would be a quick summary of it. This is something you need to do yearly. Some people even do it every six to eight months, but basically it just maintains the finish on your iron cookware. I'm gonna show you two examples now of a pan that has just been cured, seasoned, and is you know non-stick in its prime. And then I'm gonna show you a griddle I have that has not been seasoned for like two or three years, and I'm just gonna show you the difference in the appearance so that you know what to look for so you understand what I'm talking about. So this pan right here is the ideal. This was actually just cured yesterday. You can see how the light catches it. There is a really smooth, glossy black finish on this surface. That's what you want. And this, folks, is what you don't want. It's flat, it's almost like a a chalky gray color and look. You can see in the corners here, this is a little bit of leftover good seasoning. It doesn't get scraped in the corners as much, so it's not as worn down. This griddle desperately needs to be re-seasoned. Look at where it's worn off and how it's worn down. So today, I'm gonna walk you through curing this cast iron griddle. When it comes to choosing your oil that you're gonna bake onto the surface to get that non-stick finish, you wanna use an oil that's really going to harden up really well. So I find that the firmer oils tend to do better. I'll use coconut oil, uh, tallow, lard is another excellent choice. So make sure you use something that hardens really well once it sets up and cures. This is coconut oil. And to apply the oil to your pan, just use your hands and rub it in. Put on a pretty heavy coat and layer. Make sure you're getting it in all the pores and that you're saturating the pan, whether you're doing a skillet or a Dutch oven or um, a, like a, a grill like this. We're just gonna soak everything and I'm actually gonna do the edges on this one as well. Now, if you have too much fats or oils on your pan, it's actually not going to cure very well. It will usually cure bumpy and lumpy, and you're going to often have like drippy marks, and it's just not a nice situation. So what I recommend after you've saturated your pan is that you take a paper towel and you absorb some of that. You don't wanna be able to create inroads in your oil. You just want a very light coating that looks you just want your pan to look like it's wet. So we're gonna take a paper towel and absorb some of that fat, and then this thing can go right into the oven. All right, that pan looks wet, but there's not anything pooling up in any corners. It's good and it's ready to go in the oven. Now, I don't know why, but cast iron always cures 
and it leaves a smoother surface when you bake it in the oven upside down. So that's what I do for everything. It doesn't matter if it's a Dutch oven, if it's a skillet, if it's a griddle like this. Um, we put them in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And if your pans are really worn down like this one, where it's kind of a flat slate gray color, I'm gonna cure it for one hour at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna check it if things look dry, then we're gonna instantly put on another layer. And we're just gonna keep applying layers until we get that glossy coating that we're looking for. Now I have some other pans curing in the oven behind me here. So I'm just gonna slip this thing in on the bottom rack. All right, so I'll see you in an hour. Okay, so this griddle, it's been in for an hour. It's looking quite dry. We're seeing a little bit more buildup in those areas where it was already a little bit glossy, but it's time to put on a second coat. Once again, we're gonna take paper towel and we're actually gonna take the oils out of the jar with a paper towel. And this pan is super hot. You do not wanna touch it. So we're just gonna rub on the oils, another coat with our paper towel. We'll double it up so we don't burn ourselves. And we're just gonna make sure all the surface area is covered once again. And then she goes right back in the oven. All right, so our griddle is back in the oven. I'm gonna check it again in about an hour. You are gonna to have to get used to your oven and even the type of iron, the thickness of iron that your pans are made from. That stuff is all going to make a difference. So for me and my oven with most of my cast ironware, after I've got about two, two to three layers of oil built up on them, Usually I can take my time then to be about two hours apart of each seasoning, um, but you're gonna have to just tune into your own kitchen, your own cookware, your own stove, and figure that out. But for starters, I recommend checking it every hour just to make sure you don't burn your finish off. You can see we're getting more of a solid, even black throughout the whole thing. Maybe a little bit of oil here that hasn't quite absorbed yet, but you know what? It's close enough. Let's put on our second layer. No, this is our third layer. This griddle was so depleted, it's probably gonna take 10 layers to get it up to where it should be. Normally, if you have a pan that's at least been taken care of a little bit, it doesn't take this long. Usually three coatings and you're good. But this one is not good, so I'm gonna put it back in the oven and keep it going. All right, folks, last night we ran out of time. This griddle has been so incredibly depleted that I had to turn off the oven and go to bed. We're here the next morning. We're gonna continue on with the seasoning of it. So let's take a look at what we're starting to see with this. We're starting to get a little bit of that glossy finish in some places. So I'm gonna flip this camera around and I'm gonna show you. This is what you're gonna see as things progress and as you get closer to your goal. All right, here we go. You see what I'm seeing? There's a shiny, glossy color coming in with this. We've got some really nice dark patches going on. And the whole thing is starting to coat up really nicely. So guess what? We do another layer of oil and put her back in the oven. All 
All right, this cast iron griddle, you can see the light reflecting off of it. We've got a really good shiny, sheeny surface on it, even though it's a really rough pan. And I would say that griddle is done and it's ready to go for the next year. So that's how I go about curing my cast iron in the kitchen, especially when I'm working with really depleted pieces of cookware. I like to go to like hit that glossy state, but that is not to say that you have to do it that way. You don't. If you are happy just putting on, you know, one coat every six months or maybe two coats, and if you like doing it that way, then do it. There is no right or wrong. This is just how I prefer to do it. And what's important is that you lean in and you figure out what works for you in maintaining your cast iron finish. You don't have to do it the way I did it or to the extent that I did it. So I just want to put that out there before I let you go and just say, figure out what works for you and run with that. All right, folks, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.